Hello and welcome to City Corner. I'm your host, Todd Blackstock. On today's show, we have the president of World Affairs STL, Pierce Powers in studio, and the founder of HauntedGarage.net, Frankie Gambaletta. So stay with us for this and much more coming up next on STL TV. And welcome to the show. Joining us in our first segment today, Pierce Powers. He is the president of World Affairs STL. And Pierce, thanks a lot for joining us here on City Corner today. Great to be here. You Thank know, you, you're John. a prominent St. Louisan. You know, you've got business uh, interests in St. Louis, and you're all over town, aren't you? Well, I am. My wife, my six children. And Frankie, I've got to tell you, I'm going to put a plug in for him. <laughs> Knows my, all my children and goes to my son's restaurant. And his program is going to be at the High Point, which is right across from the Powers Insurance Building. And you own that, right? I own that, and I'm chairman. All right. Well, we'll get to in that. the city. We'll get to that in the second segment. But you've got the organization, uh, you're president of the World Affairs Council, STL. And this organization's got deep roots in uh, St. Louis since the late 1940s. Indeed, right after World War II, 1948, uh, a, a group of, at that time, I guess there weren't as many women involved. Thank goodness for the women we have involved in the community now. <laughs> but um, James McDonald, the founder of McDonnell Douglas, uh, for example, uh, Father John Bannon, SJ, St. Louis U, two men who became chancellors at Washington U, Sticks Baron Fuller people, a uh, whole list of them, and, and they're going to all be presented at our gala, you know, who each and every one was and what, what they did and what they've contributed. Yeah, so what made them want to start this organization? I guess it was after World War II. Is it basically to bring the world together and, and kind of share different ideas? To, to bring the world to St. Louis. Bring the world to St. Louis. And the concern was that um, after the war, we'd become too isolated. We'd become an island here. And um, they wanted to assure that by, by reaching out to the world through these councils, and there are 90 of them now in the United States, uh, that we could indeed um, do such. And I'll talk more about that in a bit about our visitors. Absolutely. Let's talk about some of the visitors. We've got international visitors coming to St. Louis, and you know they meet with, with various organizations, different age groups, and it's really a, a wonderful way to bring people together and highlight our city and kind of show off some of the things that we do around the world. Well, it's amazing. It's, it's a program through the State Department, and we're the exclusive liaison to the State Department. So in essence, these, these people, they're generally younger people, future leaders, peoples of significance in, in their countries. So they're chosen by their, per se, State Department and approved by our State Department. And I will tell you to a person, when I ask them, once they arrive here, had you ever heard of St. Louis, Missouri in your life before? No. Really? So last year, we introduced, um, my numbers will be pretty close, I think 171 visitors from 75, 80 different countries to St. Louis who didn't know we existed. Really? They didn't know about the Gateway Arch or anything no, like that, huh? No. Are they just not getting information? Do they not have the, uh, I guess, social media or like you know, television and radio like we do here? Well, St. Louis is not really on the world map. Really? And if you've ever traveled, I'm sure you have. It's just discouraging to me. Uh, where are you from? St. Louis. Oh, where's that? He said, have you ever heard of Mark Twain? Oh, yeah. It's, it's near where he's from. Or you'll have to say Chicago. But it's we want to change that. We're, that's that's a, a burning ambition of, of our organization and other organizations with whom we work. We'll just uh, tell everybody it's in the middle. The Mississippi River, right in the middle. Yeah, well, they know Huck Finn, they know Mark Twain, but they don't know <laughs> St. Louis. Well, we've got a series of photos right now we're going to roll in, and, and we're going to have you maybe introduce some of the individuals and, and give some information right here, but we'll start it off. Well, this was a group that just visited uh, in the last six, eight months, and... Um, I'm on the left, adjacent to that is the um, Deputy Ambassador Ireland, who's stationed in Houston. No kidding. And um, next to him is Don Rubin of BioSTL. We brought the Irish delegation to meet Don, and that's Neve, who is his assistant. And that on the far right is homegrown, and he'll be one of our speakers, um, Ambassador Kevin O'Malley. 
Kevin O'Malley. Kevin was the ambassador to Ireland, uh, appointed by President Obama. No kidding. Lives right here. Lives right here in St. Louis, the ambassador to Ireland. He went to high school right across the street, St. Louis U. Well, you know, it's an Irish type of, you know, time of year here in St. Louis. So I'm sure Mr. O'Malley is, is pretty busy with, busy with some of his Irish festivities. He's going to be in Washington, D.C., celebrating with the president. And uh, then he goes to Ireland right after that, and he's going to celebrate with them. Okay, well, moving on. We've got a, we have a few of these to get to. So this is our group. That's a, we also have a wonderful internship program. So the one on the left is one of our young interns. Um, he's Matthew Mataba. And next to him is um, the, the uh, lady, Susan Lohr, who actually runs our international visitors program. No kidding. And Seth George is our strategic administrator. They were just in Washington, D.C. and at the Global Ties, mingling with all the people um, who were instrumental in our gaining all these visitors to St. Louis. So we send the delegation in order that they know to send people here. We want them. That is uh, Valerie. Valerie is a St. Louis University graduate and intern uh, with us. And we nominated her for a national scholarship to Global Ties, and she gained that scholarship. So all expenses paid, they sent her to Washington, D.C., and she was a delegate representing not only St. Louis, but talking about how we handle bringing immigrants into St. Louis. She, she, that was her submission paper, if you will, and that gained her. That's a group of students um, assembled at St. Louis University. Kevin O'Malley uh, opened up remarks, but we had uh, the young man to the, to the right of me uh, was with the Peace Corps. Uh, the, the nice lady in the middle is actually with the State Department and stationed here in St. Louis, which is wonderful right now. Um, but we introduced about 30, 35 students. They came from St. Louis U, Washington U, UMSL, most of the colleges, there were 40 or 50 of them, to learn about international things they can do. So we've got a lot of stuff going on on the world stage that people don't even realize that's going on with some of our leaders here in St. Louis. And we want the young people to know about it. All right, move on. I think we got a few more here coming up. Oh, boy. Picture show. <laughs> that's Charlie Brennan on the right. He was our moderator. And next to him... I don't remember her name. She was with the State Department. The State Department did a study of past world's fairs, and they did not include us. It was oral study. Uh, some of the most interesting things were uh, they talked to the people in Seattle. And Seattle, most people said, you know, before we had our world's fair, no one knew how to even pronounce Seattle or that Seattle existed. And um, I think it'd be a terrific idea, and the State Department would... would would back us up with this to, for us to apply. They now call them expos. A visitor from Kazakhstan, I believe, and he was at the Eckerts farm oh, yeah. studying uh, sustainable farming. Eckerts has been doing that for seven generations. That's brilliant because you can show people from around the world how to be sustainable. Right. Because they there's were, many countries that, you know, they, they rely on other people and other countries to get their food and products from. And if you can grow it yourself, Absolutely. you're better off, right? Absolutely. Okay, moving on. Do we have any, uh, any more pictures? These were visitors from maybe Kenya. They wanted to study how our voting process. And uh, she's experimenting with a voting machine. Zimbabwe, I don't think yeah. they have Zimbabwe, was it? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Excellent. So, okay, here's another one here. These were the winners, uh, Crossroads College Prep, uh, of our Academic World Quest. It's intense competition this past year, just two weeks ago. We had over 30, 30 schools competing. Crossroads has won two years in a row now. They beat out St. Louis U High by one point. St. Louis U High is across the street from here. That other so, picture was Zambia, not Zimbabwe, so okay. I apologize about that. Yeah, we both missed it by a bit, sorry. But that's yeah. fantastic. You've got, the, you've got the students, you've got young people involved, you've got another yeah. one here. Those are the Crossroads students at the National Mall uh, last year. They're going again to Washington, D.C. That's what they, they, we send them in for the national competition. That's they a group from Vianney. Fun. They just won Vianney? a little. Vianney, yeah. They, they didn't win, but they won a little uh, card to Sugar Fire, I think, and they were very excited about that. That's so. neat. <laughs> so what's unique about the St. Louis chapter? We're engaged, and, and it's um, primarily volunteers, and, uh, the whole organization. I, I can only estimate, but I'm going to say we put in seven to 8,000 collectively hours 
a year at least, those of us who volunteer. Now, there's a Harvest Moon Festival that, that comes about, and uh, here that's a very interesting thing. It's fun, yeah. We celebrate the Harvest Moon and um, make it just a very fun event. So uh, Does that coincide anything with, like, solar eclipses or anything like that? Or? No, it's, it's more with uh, the, the motion of the moon, and there's, it, it comes twice a year. It's mostly in Asian countries that they celebrate that. And uh, it's fun. It's at, just a lot of fun. At the top of the show, you're mentioning how important it is to have women involved with this organization. And there's a women's entrepreneurship dinner uh, that you can learn about other countries and things. Well, going on right now, yeah. But we, we did have a group of en women entrepreneurs from, I'm thinking, seven different countries who came here to study uh, what we do, what women entrepreneurs do here. And they met with very influential Entrepreneurs, I think they met with Sharon John at uh, Build a Bear and different folks. And here they are. We are dinner diplomats. So maybe they'll go visit with someone like Sharon John. And that's great. We meet them, bring them around the town. But then we bring them to our homes for dinner. And here they are at the, the home of uh, Seth George, who's our strategic administrator. Um, that's the greatest way in the world to really connect with people from around the world at well, your you, dinner table. You've got a big gala coming up talking about dinner tables. Yeah. I know you want to talk about this because it's a, it's a big anniversary for your organization. 75 years. And um, to do that, we're celebrating um, what, what we call uh, dinner diplomacy um, and in doing such, we, we've reached back. We're going to introduce all the uh, founders. And then we have some very distinguished two St. Louis grown ambassadors and who are going to be at a, a, a fireside chat. Uh, Jody Sowell of the, of the um, um, History Museum is going to be the moderator. And we have a, uh, another career diplomat from, um, from the State Department itself. So they're going to have a fireside chat. And we're going to have Jody interviewing them. And, uh, We'll learn a lot. So that's Wednesday, April 10th at 530 at the Missouri History Museum at 5700 Lindell Boulevard, Boulevard in St. Louis. If you'd like more information, you can call 314-727-9988 or go to worldaffairsstl.org. We've got a few seconds here left. Any final thoughts that you'd like to, to get out there right now? I know you've got an insurance company here and well, you've got some uh, couple that, things. But let's keep Let's put St. Louis on the global map. And please come. We've got about 40 more tickets. We will be uh, a sold-out house at 220. All right, it's going to so, be a fabulous event. So catered by Butler's Pantry. Butler's Pantry. Wow. So Elegant. it's going to be a uh, it's going to be state of the art. It's going to be a uh, going to be first class all the way. Absolutely. Well, Pierce, thank you no so much about. for joining thank us you, here Todd. on City Corner. We really yeah. appreciate it, and good luck with your event. And we'd like to you know maybe follow up sometime and see how it went, see how it's going. Please do. Please appreciate do. it. Thanks all so right. Much. We're going to take a quick break now, but stay with us as we're going to discuss the paranormal with Frankie Gamaletta coming up next on City Corner. You're watching STL TV. Visitors and residents love the St. Louis Zoo because it's free. There's a train a carousel, opportunities to make new friends, and plenty of fun learning experiences with the animals 363 days a year. So come and experience St. Louis. Eyes forward. Don't drive distracted. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. They both keep me motivated to go to school, and they see that if I do it, like they can do it too, you know? I feel that everything's possible. 
Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. When you graduate, they graduate. Welcome back to City Corner. Our next guest is the founder and president of the HollyGarage.net podcast. Frankie Gambolato, welcome to City Corner. Thanks for having me, Todd. I'd say Pierce Powers gives you a plug right at the top of the <laughs> yes. show. You know, that must be pretty cool. Yeah. He, um, he likes to bring people together. Oh, yeah. I mean, him and uh, his daughter, and we shared um, uh, basically a little Chicago style. She was my sweet mate. She lived upstairs. Oh, okay. And she owned it, and so we, we basically lived together. She was your sweet mate, huh? Mm, <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, let's, <laughs> let's get on topic here. So, so you're a paranormal expert here in St. Louis. You got a podcast. It's kind of turned into a cool new radio show that yep. just came out. And, you know, tell us a little bit about your background and paranormal activities and how did you get involved? Yeah, I mean, paranormal has always been kind of a thing. It's kind of how when I met Jeremy when I moved here, um, he's now one of my oldest friends now. It's crazy to think that 12 years ago I met Jeremy, but um, he was into the paranormal. I was into the paranormal. At that point, I had gotten out of it, and he was still very much in it. He was on one of the largest paranormal teams, but that's actually not what got me back into it. When we started doing uh, the Lemp documentary, which hopefully comes out this year if you know Hollywood settles their stuff over there, but... Um, you know, that really got us into the ghost and thinking, well, is the Lent Mansion really haunted and stuff? And then that started a documentary that spiraled into a true crime with the daughter who was Elsa Lemp. And then we were just enthralled with paranormal. And St. Louis, I mean, uh, to Pierce's point, I mean, we're on the map when it comes to paranormal. Like people know St. Louis, Missouri, when you come to the paranormal world. They, they all want to be here. I mean, Lemp Mansion is, the, is in the top 10 most haunted places in America. Um, you have Hannibal, which you mentioned, Mark Twain. Hannibal is very haunted. Um, so Missouri in itself is very big in the paranormal community. Uh, world stage, maybe not, but um, definitely in America, it's something that draws. So it's the best place to live if you're into the paranormal because you could just take a 17-minute drive over to McPike Mansion in Illinois. You can go to Haunted Alton, Illinois, and go to Mineral Springs. And so all of this kind of culminated, and we were like, you know what? We need a podcast. We need to start telling people about the adventures that we're having. Uh, let's throw in some horror films and do some critiques of that. We brought in Travis Brown, who has horror movies uncut. So he joined our squad. So we do all these kind of cool movie reviews now. And uh, he's seen every horror movie there is. So, Well, I guess The Exorcist would put St. Louis on the map. Yes. Because I'm not sure in the movie if The Exorcist, at least they say it's based in St. Louis. But the house there in Bel Nor yeah. is the house that that went down. What do you know about all that? Did you ever drive by there? Oh, yeah. I mean, Jeremy has actually um, investigated it five times. He's actually been in the house, been on the grounds. He's actually been with Ghost Adventures, with Zach Baggins. I mean, my partner in this show is pretty incredible when it comes to the paranormal community. The exorcist case uh, happened in May 1949. Um, it is one of the most famous exorcism case for a bunch of different reasons. Um, now, I'm Roman Catholic, and Jesuits kind of led that exorcism, and that's not really their forte at all so that's that's legit then it's very legit it was a very scary case the actual name of the person um they called him ronnie or something but his real name was ronald edwin hunkler and he would go on after the exorcist to have to hold five heat shielding patents with nasa he became a rocket scientist legitimately um so he's still alive he still lives up in, in maryland um i only know of one person that's actually talked to him about the case he's never been open or public about it um, but the case is definitely something that's very intriguing and scary. Um, when the case starts in Maryland, uh, one of the initial priests, which was Scholes, who was uh, Lutheran, uh, he tries to do an exorcism. Once again, not their forte. This is Roman Catholic stuff that you're dealing with. This is old, ancient rituals and stuff like that. I just happened to know Father Gary Thomas, who is the premier exorcist. They did a movie on him called The Right, and he will open... Um, this show Saturday night, actually, Father Gary Thomas opens our show at 9 p.m. this um, Saturday. What is it, uh, Horror Fest? Uh, well, so the Horror Fest is totally something different. Okay. Uh, we do our own, like, 
you know, we do our own investigations and then horror films just happen to kind of follow through that. So we decided to run a horror, horror fest as well. We do a lot of stuff. Man. <laughs> well, let's, so uh, we've got a little bit of video from one of your podcasts. Okay. I, I don't know. I think it might be a review or something. It's a review. I think we'd like to, to roll that in and, and show you in action, Frankie. Okay. All right. Skinner Marink does um, a lot of interesting things. If you're just joining us now in the... <laughs> It's like we're reacting to something in Evil Dead. Yeah, so the jump scares are supposed to be analog in this film, so you're or audio, and they end up. So you're pretty animated there, aren't you? You got yeah. the effects going. Now let's face it, we we know that the paranormal and spirits do exist, um, but a lot of times, if you want to be entertaining and and uh, to speed things up, I mean, don't you enhance things a little bit like that? I mean, obviously that was enhanced. You did it. Uh, what separates the enhancement for entertainment and the legit paranormal spirits? So TV would tell you that it, demons sell. So if you've noticed the trend in ghost shows right now, everything's a demon. And that's just not the truth. Demons are actually very, very rare. And demons don't really attack people. Demons are going after priests. Demons are going after a specific clergy. That's how demons operate. That's what they want. And in most cases, when it deals with exorcisms, demons are involved and they want to get based with the priest in that general. So, you know, when it comes to the actual paranormal, we don't enhance anything. I mean, it's if you're in a haunted destination, um, the best ghost tool you can have is your instinct and your gut. Now, there's a long line of individuals in St. Louis. I'm going to start with George Norrie. Now, when I, I heard your uh, interesting story and what you're doing now in your new show, yeah. I thought, this guy is probably a George Norrie disciple, mm -hmm. are you? Absolutely. I was a kid listening to Art Bell, and then it went from Art Bell to George Norrie, uh, coast to coast. And he's an idol of ours. He's a mentor. Um, He's still doing it, and he does it like nobody can. We don't even want to compare ourselves to George Norrie. Um, but he's met some of the most incredible and uh, interesting people, I would say eccentric, um, that there is. And so our show really wants to be focused on St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and it's just, you know, it's a show that's for the people here, you know. Like, we really want to entertain, but we also want to talk about, you know, our paranormal and people and mysteries and stuff that's happened in St. Louis. A lot of people don't know Pearl Curran lived in the Central West End in 1919. Pearl Curran was a famous writer who basically wrote five famous titled books, but she wrote all those books through a spirit in the Ouija board. We're going to talk all about Pearl Curran, hopefully with one of our representatives from the university, I'm sorry, from the uh, Missouri History Museum. So have you ever experienced a spirit during your, you know, I guess your findings and your, your tours of the different you know, spooky places, and are there nice ones and mean ones, territorial ones? How does it work? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the first episode we just did on our new radio show is called Paranormal 101, and we go through all the haunts. Hauntings are all different. So you have, um, you know, you have residual hauntings, you have intelligent hauntings, you have portal hauntings, you have demonic possessions, um, you have dark entities, and there's a space between cryptids where you're getting into Bigfoot and Mothman and chupacabras so all hauntings are different the most famous one and probably the most um the one that really happens a lot i would say is residual haunting um the residual haunting is something that cannot interact with you you're just basically watching um a, a thing from the past you're watching time you're watching somebody walk up a staircase you're watching somebody you know clean the kitchen you're watching somebody cook a meal you're watching somebody waltzing in a ballroom in the victorian palaces and in, in virginia that's residual right it's something that held a lot of energy something traumatic happened our spirits territorial because you think you waltz through a cemetery in the middle of the night you know, you might be like, you know, standing on sacred ground or you might be irritating the flow of somebody's peace. You know, I, I think of things like Zombie Road out in Wildwood, which when we were in high school, we heard about it. We'd, we would go hang out there. And one night we were out there, we got stuck. Our tire got stuck, another mm -hmm. couple and, and myself and another gal. And we couldn't get out. So we get out and all of a sudden we see like these lights, weird light things, and then like just some weird energy and we, uh, luckily, somebody came by in a truck and a chain that was just hanging out and pulled us out of the sand because we don't even know how we got stuck there. But 
you know, it, it's, it's kind of funny thinking about, you know, weird events and, and things like that, you know, lights flickering and, you know, is that just your electric is, you know, as a surge or is that a spirit? Um, I mean, it could be both. Uh, when you're talking about territorial, um, it depends on where you're at. In most cases, cemeteries are the least haunted places. Really? People don't die in cemeteries. Um, so it's basically rest. But when you're talking about Gettysburg, which became a graveyard because of all the dead, um, that's something different, right? You have a lot of traumatic things happening in Gettysburg. Gettysburg, if you're not a paranormalist, if you don't believe, I would suggest spending a night in Gettysburg. And I guarantee you, when you wake up the next morning, you'll be a believer. You know, the Trail of Tears went through Cape Girardeau and Jackson, Missouri uh, with the Indians. There's so many artifacts and things along the way there. That's got to be, I know Cape Girardeau and, and down in that area, there's a lot of uh, paranormal activity. Yeah. The Even on the SEMO campus. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the desecration of a lot of Native American graveyards, too, has caused things to kind of be unleashed as well. Um, I don't know of many that actually have the right components inside the graveyard anymore. A lot of them were basically pillaged to be put in a museum, which when you think about that, that's kind of crazy, right? Like we robbed the tomb to put it in a museum so people could see it. And then we somehow call this history. And that's just, tombs should not be disturbed. Things should be put back. Um, and that was the whole goal of the Indiana Jones films. It's like it belongs in a museum. I guess it doesn't belong in a museum probably belongs in the grave. Um, so, you know, when you get into that kind of mixture, then you're dealing with curses, you're dealing with darker entities, and you're also dealing with those territorial spirits that are sent there to guard the dead. So, you know, you, when you get into ancient Egypt and people that did that, you get a lot of curses, you get a lot of deaths that follow. So, I mean, think about what they're doing, though. If you had, you know, a shot at that, and we're going to get into all that, including Zombie Road, which you know, if you're listening to this right now, you know, Zombie Road is very dangerous. The Miramac is not something to be messed with. It might look beautiful and, and great and pristine, but the Miramac has taken more lives than any river in St. Louis. Well, especially over by Castlewood, which isn't exactly. too far from there. And then there, I think there was an orphanage near there where a lot of kids were killed. Exactly. And, uh, and there was a train station there yep. that uh, had some, some weird stuff going on with some pretty prominent people. Any final thoughts about your new radio show, where can we listen to it before we let you go? Yeah, it's uh, News Talk STL. Every Saturday night from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. We'll be covering everything that's 94.1 or 101.9 STL. All right, before we let you go, any final thoughts? No, just thanks for having me. It was awesome to see Pierce. And you guys are running a great program here, and I love I can do it for STL too. So. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us here. We'd like to thank our studio guest, Pierce Powers, Mr. Frankie Camaletti. I'd like to thank you for watching City Corner on STL TV, Experience St. Louis. Ooh.